This is every fight to make after UFC 308, Taporia versus Holloway. I have every fighter on the screen with the main event to the headliner of the prelims, which is Ibu Aslan. And um, this is going to be, I'm going to break down what I think is going to be next for their opponents, um, what I think should be next. But um, in this case, in the main event, I'll get to it in a second. There's just not much of an argument I can really make. Um, so, yeah, I think this is what should be next for every opponent, starting with the main event. Ilya Taporia got a huge win over Max Holloway by KO. Put Max out. Um, he put Max away. Put Max away. Incredible performance from Ilya Taporia. Said what he was going to do to uh, Holloway, and he delivered. Talk the talk and walk the walk. Now, what is next for Ilya Taporia? Now, Lopez, I think, should be next. If I was the matchmaker, I would say Volks. I know you stepped aside for this one. Just win one fight. That's all I need from you, Volk. Beat the winner of Evlo of Aljo. If it's Aljo, good win. Legacy-wise, good win for Volk. Bantamweight Goat versus the Featherweight Goat, arguably. Both of them, although Cruz and Aldo could be in their... It's, it's a Cruz Aldo situation with Volk and Aljo um, in this new modern era. But um, you can arguably sell that as GOAT versus GOAT. And then for if Evloev wins, you beat an undefeated Dagestani Volk, and then that would be, that'd be huge hype. Massive hype. But no. Um, Lopez, I think, should be next. I think you should give Volk, uh, Lopez the opportunity just because... Um, I haven't pulled out the opponent yet, but still. Volpez, I think, should be next, realistically, because he made weight here in the backup at 145. I wouldn't have pushed this narrative or pushed this at all for Lopez. Like, I think he should be there, but I don't think he... I think he'd need one more. He came to Abu Dhabi and made 145 championship weight. Step, it would have stepped in if anything happened. But Dana White's so... Like, well, Dana White just fucking hates Volkanovski. So, yeah, let's just do the Volk fight, because I know they're going to do it. And, um, yeah, Volk's going to die. He has zero chance in this fight. Ilya will just snipe him again. Whoa, Volk took time off. Ilya will need just one clean shot, and the fight is over. Ilya will win. Do you want to see this? If you do, you're fucking a Volk hater. That's what it is. So, yeah, let's do the Volk fight. The UFC's going to do it. They're just going to side up Lopez because they don't. I know Volk's arguably the featherweight goat. And I know people don't want to see it because, like, you don't really count the Makachev fight. Because was... he did lose his belt to Taporia. He should get an immediate rematch. But Lopez came in and waited at 145 as a backup. Did it. And was active all year. Beat Yusuf. Beat Ige. Beat Ortega. Did he beat one more guy? No, he didn't. I don't think he did. But still... He's been active this year and beating all these guys pretty easily. He gave fight was eh, but like bad conditions for that fight. You know? Lopez should get something realistically here, but he'll probably face the winner of Aljo Evloev. So we make way for Volk's funeral. So yeah, um, I would usually put Lopez's face here, but I just can't really argue that the Dana's already interested. He's already saying yes to Volk getting a, a shot. And Volk came in the cage. Volk came in the cage. He tried doing something. Volk, you stand zero chance. If Volk wins, that's the biggest upset in the history of the sport. One of them. Like, he doesn't stand a chance. I wouldn't even be surprised if Ilya was a heavy favorite here. Minus, like, 500. He doesn't stand a chance. If you're picking Volk, you hate Ilya. You don't have any proper logic. He'll just get chinned again. Like... I don't want to see this. I'm not, I have zero hype for this. I'm more hype for John Jones Stipe than fucking this. Don't want to see it, but they're going to do it. So we can't do anything about it. We move on. Good win, Ilya, though. But him versus Volk is going to be the rematch they do, unfortunately. Lopez should get it, but they're not going to give it to him, even though he weighed in as a backup at 145. But yeah, he's probably going to get El El the winner of Evloev Aljo. We move on. To the co-main event, or not the co-main event, the loser of the main event. Max Holloway lost to Ilya Taporia. Unfortunate for Holloway, but 
It's not a KO where it's like, yeah, his chin might be cracked. But it wasn't like he got put out cold, like stiff, you know? He was out for a second, don't get me wrong. But he popped back up. He's good. Take some time off. I say six months off for Max Holloway. Come back around June or July. August, maybe, if that's a bit of a push. But still, that's when I think he should come back. I'd say July. June or July, though. May at earliest. May is the earliest I'll give Max Holloway. My throat's dry. Let me drink something. And there's nothing in this drink, man. I don't know what to do. Um, I'd say Max Holloway's next opponent. Now, there's a lot of options. I don't know if they're going to strip him off the BMF. They might. And Holloway should understand that as well. He just lost. He's not known as the BMF anymore. I know it's Max Holloway, and he's the BMF Max Holloway. He did what he did to Gaethje, but still. Still. Max Holloway. You know? It's just not going to be. It's going to be hard to look him as the BMF now. So there's a lot of options. Now, I think you should move to lightweight. Lightweight's the move for Max Holloway. By the way, it's done. You cleared up the division. He didn't clear it out, but he's fought everyone. He's like, there's no point in sticking around for an Eberlweb fight and just ruining Eberlweb, potentially. Let's fe- have Featherweight grow without Holloway. Because Holloway's just been at the top forever. So get rid of the ranking of Holloway at Featherweight. Have him at lightweight at around number six or five. And let's do Holloway versus the loser. Of Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. I think the winner will fight. I think the winner will get a title shot. Or McGregor. That's what I see. The loser will be in a weird position. Because if Charles loses. It's, his career is basically done. But a Holloway fight could save it. And if Chandler loses. What the fuck does he do? Go to welterweight? He's going to be too small. Like I don't know. I don't think that's going to go well for him. And he can't go to featherweight. That will drain him completely. So, I think this is, the one, this is what you do. The winner of that, Holloway, uh, Charles Oliveira, Michael Chan will get a shot at the belt after Armin Sarukian or against Sarukian if he's champ. Um, and the loser, which I think will be Chandler, I think Charles Oliveira is going to beat him by finish early. I think that him versus Max Holloway is perfect. The winner stays on, has more big fights, loser goes home. That's what I see in this fight. So I think the loser of Charles Oliveira, Michael Chandler versus Holloway, June or July, International Fight Week, or just a big co-main event of a pay-per-view. I don't think this is main event worthy anymore. I just don't think it is. Holloway needs to... I don't think he's main event now. I think he can be the co-main event of a pay-per-view. And this is what you do. Holloway versus Chandler or Oliveira if he loses. One of them, I think, makes sense. We move on. Chemayev, he got a huge win over Robert Whitaker. Bit salty, but, you know, logic doesn't make any fucking sentence in the sport. But, you know, good win comes out. He got a good win. I have to give him some credit here. A lot of credit here. He beat Robert Whitaker like that. Like, Drickus took it to the second round. Like, people say, oh, Drickus made it look easy. Izzy looked, oh, look at Izzy against Whitaker. Look what he did. Drickus made it look easier. Now, Hamza made it look easier than Drickus. Like, it's just, it sucks to be Whitaker. Because he's just sacrificing his own career for these for the middleweight to be good. Hamza won, though. And I think he should fight Drakus Duplessis next. Now, let me say something. You promised Strickland a shot at the bell. I know Strickland, I've been defending him lots in this situation. And I could just let go because Strickland's been pissing me off lately. Because he hasn't been fighting. And I just want to see Strickland get back in there because he says all this shit on Twitter and just never backs it up. Oh, wow, he tapes and jabs of Costa for five rounds in the most boring fight ever. So, I think you do this. Drickus Duplessis, Sean Strickland 2 in January. Let's get it done and over with. Don't know why the UFC hasn't announced Makachev Sarukian. I think they need to announce some of these fights. All right, we're already in November almost. So, Strickland Duplessis 2, January, main event. Let's just settle this once and for all. Makashev Saruki in February, whatever. Or maybe have it on the same card. I don't I think you need to just clear up Strickland Duplessis. I, I know it's I know people don't want to see it, and I personally want to see Hamza just get I want to see Hamza Drickus. But I think you need to do Duplessis Strickland too. 
I think Duplessis wins the rematch. And I think that... I think, um... What's his name? Duplessis should fight Shemayev later in the year. Maybe around... Maybe you do Holloway versus Chandler Coleman event, main event, Duplessis, Shemayev. International fight week. Calls to be Strickland here, but I think Duplessis is going to win comfortably. I think a lot of people are agreeing with that now. Um, and yeah, I'm going to say this will happen. It could be right away, but it can also be Duplessis after beating Strickland and then fighting Chimaev later in the year. That's what, that's what should happen. So yeah, maybe you do this right away. Wouldn't mind it. Strickland. I get why he sat out, but still... Just fight. I'll get Strickus. Make the fight happen. Let's settle it once and for all. And then we can do Chimaev versus the winner later in the year. Or just Chimaev do Plessy right away. Now we get to Robert Whitaker. I care here. Um, I want him to not fall off. Bad loss he had. He broke his jaw. Front of his jaw. He looks good though. Like I think he will heal quickly from this. But he will need time off to recover fully. And I think Robert Whitaker should be looking to face also later in the year, maybe. I know that the Sydney card is a good return. I don't think that's what it should happen. For. I think Whitaker needs health first. Maybe he'll rush it. I just don't think he will. I, don't, I think he'll take time off, come back when he's ready. Legacy over fans, Robert Whitaker. And I think Robert Whitaker should face Strickland. Strickland when he loses to Drickus. That's the smart move you do there. Robert Whitaker versus Sean Strickland. If Strickland after Strickland loses to Drake, yes, because Strickland will want to get back in there, and um, Whitaker by then will be ready to go. While the Sydney card's happening, he'll be ready to go. So I'd say like around April, May, make the fight happen. Strickland versus Duplessis. Uh, no, Strickland after he loses to Duplessis versus Whitaker. Once and for all, law. This is like a big fight that just hasn't happened. I think this is what you do, Strickland. Uh, Whitaker, make it happen. This is exactly the fight you do uh, after Strickland loses. If 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 it's the other way around, Strickland Shamaya for the belt, and I think you do Whitaker versus like Allen or something. Allen Kennedy rematch, one of these fights. But Strickland will be coming off a loss for the belt, and then Whitaker's there. It just makes a lot of sense. So yeah, we move on. Tomago Madenka won against Rakic in a boring fight. Let's do him versus uh, Jan Blachowicz in a rematch. No, I'm joking. Um, Alex Pereira. It's, it's You've got to make this now. Listen, before it was like, okay, he beat Johnny Walker, but he just beat Rakic. Walker, and he's been looking good. There's no doubt now, I don't think. No doubt now. I think this is the fight you do. This is the exact fight you do. Um... Ankalaya versus Pereira. You have to make it now, I think. I think it's undeniable. He's the number one contender. Was the number one contender coming into the Rackage fight. And yeah. And I think this needs to be clear. Before Pereira goes to heavyweight, and listen, I think Pereira would beat Ankalaev. Before Ankalaev goes to heavy or Pereira goes to heavyweight, he needs to get this loss. And get this win. Kabul will say, ah, oh, you ducked Ankalaev. So he needs to get this win. I think he would win. Just make it happen. Make it happen. We got to see the truth here. We got to see what happens here. I think Pereira would win. But still, this is what you do next. Pereira versus Magomed and Kalaev. We move on. Lerone Murphy won on the main card against Dan Ige. And we can do him versus... And make the and Kalaev Pereira fight around March or April. Maybe April. I think Aspinall will return in the UK by then. And Edwards and a lot of them. Um, Laurent Murphy. Maybe this can be on the UK as well. Murphy. Maybe in the UK can fight against... He called out Josh Emmett. Oh, shit. And I got rid of fucking Murphy. Accidentally. What the fuck? Um, he got a good win against Danny Gay. Called out Josh Emmett. Make it happen. Uh, Murphy. He's number eight, Josh Emmett. Murphy will play probably around number 11, 10. And he should be looking up. He looked down in this fight, down the rank. He's in number 14, Dan Ige. And Emmett's... Where's Emmett? 
had an insane KO against Bryce Mitchell and just hasn't returned since. A year ago. He nearly hit a year ago now. He has to return somewhat soon. So I'd say Murphy versus Emmett. I think this is what you do. I'd probably go for Josh Emmett, to be honest with you guys. Murphy seems crackable. And I think Ige, you can't afford to be get, get hit here and there. Emmett will knock you out cold with any sort of impact on your chin. So, I think Emmett would win. This is what you would do. Um, Emmett versus Murphy. In the UK, let's do it. UK, like maybe we can have like Aspinall versus someone. Versus like Gon Volkov winner. Main event, co-main event. Edwards versus Sean Brady. Feature fight. Um, this, Emmett versus Murphy. Build Murphy's name up more and more. He's undefeated. And yeah, this is what you do. And yeah, we move on to Shara Bullet Magomedov got a big win. Um, Shara Magomedov got a big win over Arm Petrosian by KO for double spinning back fists. Big KO, he needed that for his career. Do I think it's enough for any sort of ranked opponent? No, it's Arm Petrosian. He was coming off a loss in this uh, before this fight, and I think the next opponent for him. Um. He's a guy that won also on the card. He won against Bruno Fajay on the prelims. Abbas Magomedov. Now, I think this is interesting in terms of where Shara Bullet ranks himself. I think this this I think this ranks where like I think this ranks where Shara Bullet's level is. I got keep on Shara Bullet, but it's just that's his nickname. I, I don't like saying Shara Magomedov. It just sounds like an NPC. Um so I think this is what you do. Share out Magomedov. Here's the thing. Abbas Magomedov come off great two wins over Bruno Fajaya by finish and Warley Alves. Barajo took him to a competitive decision. Barajo's top five. Sean Strickland beat him in round two, but had a tough first round. I know he does good in round one's Abbas. But Shara is typically good in round one as well. He's fresh, he's awake early. So if he goes out there and finishes Abbas the way Barajo couldn't, and Strickland finishes him because of accumulation, gassing out shots, then so that's massive. So that's what I would do. I think that's what I would do. Um, if Sher Bullet can finish him under like a round or two rounds, it shows that he's with the Sean Strickland's in terms of levels. I know that doesn't mean that at all, but it kind of does. Abbas has come off two great wins. He wasn't coming off a win over Dustin Stoltzfus, where Strickland, that's where Str- that was, what Strickland had to research in terms of Abbas Magomedov for their fight. So it, I think this is what you do. Share a bullet, Magomedov versus Abbas Magomedov, battle of the Magomedovs. And yeah, this is what you do. Maybe for a, a decent card, maybe at the end of the year, they didn't take much damage, so I think you should do it. I think you should do it. At the end of the year, maybe. Maybe he, I want to see Sheriff on a U.S. pay-per-view. You need to put him on there. But I say you put him on the Jan Figueredo card in Macau. That's what you do, I think, maybe. We move on to Jeff Neal. Oh, we're already at 18 minutes. Fuck. Jeff Neal got a good win over RDA. Dropped him early. Looks crisp in the final. RDA suffered a knee injury. Looked fake as fuck. RDA. I know it's not actually fake, but still. He did look like he kind of milked it a bit. Um, his extra opponent. Now, I was thinking Joaquin Buckley. But then I thought, well, Buckley, I don't think they're going to look. D- Buckley, I think, they're, I think they are building Buckley up. He's somewhat of a big name. And he just beat Wonderboy, who Jeff Neal got schooled by for five rounds. So I think they are building him a bit. I think they are building Buckley. I don't think they're going to look down Jeff Neal. Risky fight for Buckley. So I think they're going to do Jeff Neal versus... I don't think he has a fight. Michael Morales. I don't think he has a fight. I think he come off a win over Magny. I don't think he does have a fight. I think this is a fight you do. Jeff Neal versus Michael Morales. No, I mean, common sense. could be an Apex co-main event. Apex main event. It's a solid fight that you know is going to be guaranteed fireworks. And hey, I might even pick Jeff Neal. Probably wouldn't. But still, 
Because it is already, it is already gay. He's old. He's washed. Morales is a young up and comer. So I think you do this. Jeff Neal versus Michael Morales. Make it happen. Maybe on the prelims of a pay-per-view. Anytime, anywhere. We move on. So I didn't really want to add this guy, but he has to get somewhat credit for his win. He beat Rafael Cucara, who I picked to win against Ibo, Ibo at Salon. Um, Ibo got a great win in, in 50 seconds. I think you should do him against nothing crazy, not a ranked opponent, nothing like that. But if he wins this, then we can look at the ranked opponent area. Modestus Makowskis. Maybe on the UK pay-per-view as well. Who knows? In March. Maybe we can do that. And, uh, yeah. Makes sense. Makowskis coming off a good win over Marching Pratchino. He has somewhat, like, he is consistent here and there. I'd say you do this fight. Makowskis, Islan, whenever you want. And that's it. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I don't want to see Ilya Volk. But, um, yeah, we just, we're just going to have to do it. Lopez should be next, really, but I just know that there's no point. When Dana already said yes, didn't even bring up Lopez's name. No one fucking brought up Lopez's name. Whatever. Peace.